Welcome to part 2 of our toe dissection video. For part 1, check the link in the description below. Now I'll open up the torso. And to do that, I'll cut through the skin here, being careful not to cut through the muscle layer right underneath. Cut horizontally near the legs, then cut vertically up the side, and then cut horizontally again near the arms to make a sort of rectangle. The skin is attached to the muscle by connective tissue, which is the silvery material that my scalpel is cutting through. So now I'll just cut this rectangular flap of skin off to make a sort of window. So now we can see some of the muscles of the toad. So here are the abdominal muscles, and here are the muscles that move the forelimbs. So you can see how the muscles move with the forelimbs. Here are the pectoralis muscles, which are connected to the sternum right here. And here on the sides are the oblique muscles. Now I'm going to cut open the muscle layer as well. So now let's take a look at the internal anatomy. The first thing you see here is the liver, this blue structure. The liver has three lobes, so one lobe here, another lobe here, and a third lobe here. And it's the largest organ in the toad's body. The liver is the ultimate multitasker. It produces bile stores and releases glucose, detoxifies blood, and etc. So here below the liver is the gallbladder, this pouch-like structure that stores and releases bile that the liver produces. Now above the liver is this heart here, the heart is surrounded by this shiny, smooth, membranous sac, and this is called the pericardial sac. It basically gives the heart its own room, so it can pump without a lot of friction or bumping against other structures. Now I'll cut open the pericardial sac so we can see the heart better. So amphibians have a three-chambered heart which means it has two atria. So the atria are these dark triangles. So here's one. And on this side, here's another. Right here, but only one ventricle, as you can see here. The disadvantage of a three-chambered heart is that oxygenated and deoxygenated blood can mix, which reduces the efficiency of the circulatory system. In humans and other mammals, the heart has four chambers, which allows for a complete separation of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. However, in frogs and toads, a three-chambered heart is good enough because they can take in oxygen through the skin, allowing for a less efficient oxygen distribution in the circulatory system. You can also see because of the injection, this pink aorta coming off from the ventricle and leading into the upper parts of the body. The aorta carries oxygenated blood from the ventricle to the other parts of the body. However, while toads can use their skin to absorb oxygen, they also use their lungs to supplement their oxygen supply, especially after strenuous activity. So you can see the lungs here it's these spongy gray structures right here. And another one on the other side, right here. 
so on both sides of the heart. However, toads don't really breathe in the same way we do. In humans, breathing occurs when the chest cavity expands and sucks in outside air into the lungs through negative pressure. Toads have something called positive pressure breathing. The toad draws air into its mouth here by expanding its throat, increasing the volume of its mouth. Then it opens its nostrils, allowing air to enter and fill the enlarged mouth. Then the nostrils close and air in the mouth is forced into the lungs here as the throat contracts. Now below the liver, this J-shaped structure here is the stomach which leads in from the esophagus up here. The stomach stores and digests food. You can also see these blood vessels supplying the stomach. Toads can't really vomit like we do actually, so when they want to spit out something unpleasant in their stomach, they literally turn their stomach inside out and dangle it out of their mouth. It's kind of like emptying a bag by pushing its bottom up to the top. But when it's not vomiting, the stomach functions in mechanical and chemical digestion. Now right next to the stomach, this round structure here is the spleen, which makes and stores blood cells and also destroys them if necessary. Now, after the food leaves the stomach, you can see it enters the small intestine here which absorbs the nutrients from the food. So this is the small intestine. You can see the small intestine is pretty long, and this is to maximize the surface area for absorption. The small intestine also has scaffolding to keep it in place, and this is called mesentery tissue. You can also see the blood vessels inside the mesentery tissue here, as the mesentery tissue is also responsible for supplying blood to the small intestine. Right after the small intestine, the food enters the large intestine here. You can see the large intestine is much thicker and shorter than the small intestine. And this is where excess water from the food is absorbed and feces is made and stored until it can be excreted via the cloaca. Now I'll cut out the liver to see the structures underneath it better. So on the side, you can see these yellow finger-like projections. And these are the fat bodies of the toad, which is where fat is stored. The fat bodies allow toads to store more fat and hold on to extra energy reserves. This is especially important to toads when it's preparing for hibernation, a state of minimal activity that toads often enter in winter. You can also see another set of fat bodies on the other side of the toad, right here. So now let's look at the reproductive organs. This toad is female, which you can tell by all this black and white mass here which are the eggs filling the ovaries. So this is the ovaries where eggs are produced and stored. You can also see this crinkled structure here, right here, and its counterpart on the other side, right here. So combined, this V-shaped structure is called the oviduct, and it's responsible for secreting the thick, jelly-like substance coating toad eggs. And in toad eggs, fertilization happens externally. The female lays her eggs in the water, then the male comes and fertilizes the eggs with his sperm. Now I'll cut between the stomach and the intestine. So now you can see the toad's kidneys. It's this long, dark structure here, it's not bean-shaped like it is in humans. You can also see another one on the other side right here. And the kidneys filter the blood 
can produce urine. This urine is then excreted through the cloaca. So now I've cut out the stomach and you can see how the esophagus comes in and leads out into the intestine. You can also see the valve that separates the esophagus from the stomach. You can see how a ring of tissue pinches in here and this is called the cardiac valve. Now I'll cut away some of the small intestine attached here. And then you can see another valve right here, which is actually much tighter and leads into the small intestine. This is called the pyloric valve. So now I'll cut the stomach open lengthwise. So the stomach is empty right now, but it has these grooves as you can see. And these grooves are basically like an accordion, so it can help the stomach expand. It also helps with mechanical digestion by pummeling the food and helping it break down. And these grooves are called rugae. So this is a section of the small intestine and I'll cut it open lengthwise as well. The inside texture is kind of fuzzy. You can see there's tiny projections coming up from the intestinal wall that make it a bit fuzzy or kind of like a carpet. These projections are called villi and they increase the surface area of the small intestine to help with absorption of nutrients. That's the end of part 2 of the toe dissection. Thank you for watching! Here's a fun fact to send you on your way. In the 1930s, farmers in Australia were desperately trying to get rid of cane beetles that were ravaging their sugarcane crops. Their solution introduced 102 cane toads to eat the cane beetles. Unfortunately, those cane toads soon became a pest in their own right ballooning into a number of 1.5 billion in Australia. Let this be a cautionary tale against hastily introducing new species into an area. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more if you found this video helpful.